Today we're going to be doing a comparison between the Canon R7 and a brand new Canon R8. And these are two very different cameras, but they both cost $1,500. So you might be wondering, what are the differences? Which one should I buy? Well, that's what I'm here for. And I have a full review of the R8 coming soon in a couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that. But hopefully this will be a good preview for it. So let's get right to it. First, the R7 is the unofficial successor to the legendary 7D Mark II. The body is quite big for a crop sensor camera. I can't really test the durability and the weather sealing of this camera for obvious reasons, but the body has all the buttons and dials for more advanced users, a joystick for adjusting the focusing points. It has two card slots, which you can record simultaneously as a backup. And it also has the same size battery as its bigger brothers, the R5 and the R6. So although it's not the most portable crop sensor camera, you get all the pro features and a rugged body design. The R8, on the other hand, a very different approach here. A full frame sensor in a small and light body. In fact, the R8 is about 150 grams lighter than the R7, and it's even 24 grams lighter than the original RP. The difference in size may not seem that dramatic on video, but the R7's grip is a bit deeper and taller, just enough so that all of my fingers can be on the grip. And on the R8's grip, my pinky finger rests at the bottom of the camera, but I would say they are equally comfortable to hold because the R8's a lot lighter. But because of that, the controls are much more basic compared to the R7, and you only get one SD card slot and a much smaller battery as well. There's really no accurate and sophisticated way to test battery life because everyone's use cases will be different. But based on my experience with these batteries and different cameras, you can probably expect roughly two times more battery life with the R7's battery. There's no joystick on the R8, but there is a feature that lets you use the back screen uh, to adjust the focusing point while looking through the viewfinder, and you just have to enable that in the menu. And there are also some similarities between these two cameras as well. Their viewfinders and rear screen resolutions are the same, 2.36 million dots for the viewfinder, and 1.6 million for the monitor. 1.6 million dots for the rear screen nowadays is a pretty decent number actually, but the 2.36 million dots for the viewfinder is kind of on the lower side. With that said, I didn't have any problem using the viewfinder and the feed is very responsive and smooth, but for a high resolution, high performance camera like the R7, I think they could have done better, but maybe they kept the resolution low to make it more responsive and smooth. With the R8, it makes more sense because the higher resolution screens also mean more power. So it was probably more appropriate for the R8 smaller battery. And apart from the body design, the biggest difference between the two cameras is of course the sensor. The R7 has a 32 megapixel APS-C sensor, probably a slightly upgraded version of the sensors in the M6 Mark II and the 90D. And the R8 has the 24 megapixel full frame sensor. And I was pretty surprised by this. And this is actually the same sensor from the R6 Mark II, which is a camera that costs a thousand dollars more. Its native ISO goes up to 102,000, while the R7 sensor only goes up to 32,000. You can easily see the difference in noise when you look at these images images side by side. But the R7 being a more feature packed camera between the two, it has in-body sensor stabilization, which supports up to seven stops of shake correction, as well as auto level technology. While the only way to get any sort of hardware stabilization on the R8 is through lenses that have image stabilization. So while the R8 sensor performs better in low light, the R7 kind of makes up for it because the IBIS lets you use slower shutter speed in some situations. And one last difference on the hardware that might be worth mentioning is the shutter. On the R7, you have three options. You can either shoot with the mechanical shutter or the electronic first curtain or the full electronic shutter. On the R8, they have gotten rid of the mechanical shutter, so you can either shoot with a full electronic shutter or the electronic first curtain. I don't want to get into too much technical details in this video, but I personally like to use mechanical shutters most of the time because that's the way to get the best results without any uncertainties. But the electronic first curtain shutter also has some benefits, like you get less vibration and noise, less shutter lag, and slightly faster flash sync speed. But you can get some distortion in the background while shooting with a fast lens, 
but so far, I haven't noticed any issues with it. But the more meaningful difference between the two, the R7's mechanical shutter's maximum speed is 1 8,000th of a second, while the r 8 shutter can only go up to 1 4,000th. But they can both shoot up to 1 16,000th of a second with the electronic shutter. Like its predecessor, the 7D Mark II, the R7's biggest strength is speed, which is obviously important for shooting fast-moving subjects. The R7 can shoot up to 15 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and 30 frames per second with the electronic shutter. While the RA can only shoot up to 6 frames per second with its electronic first curtain shutter, it can actually shoot faster than the R7 with the electronic shutter up to 40 frames per second. Now let's get into some video specs. Both of these cameras have gotten huge upgrade in the video department compared to their predecessors. They can both shoot up to 4K60 without crop, which is pretty amazing. But to point out some differences, the r 8 4K is downsampled from 6K all the way up to 60 frames per second, and the R7's 4K 24 and 30 frames per seconds are downsampled from 7K, but its 4K 60 uses line skipping, so the quality is not as great. If you want 4K 60 in best quality, you have to use the 4K cropped mode with 1.8x crop. But another good news is that they've finally gotten rid of the 30 minute recording limit on these cameras in most of the shooting modes. The R8 still has the 30 minute limit in 4K60, and in other modes you can shoot for up to two hours, but then because of its smaller battery, it could never reach the full two hours. But you can power it through USB while shooting, so as long as you're willing to deal with that, it shouldn't be a problem. The high frame rate mode was also upgraded. The R7 can shoot 1080 up to 120 frames per second, and the R8 can actually shoot up to 180 frames per second. So to sum it all up, the R7, the feature-packed crop sensor camera versus the R8, a super light full-frame camera with surprisingly amazing video specs, in their own ways, they both feel like they took the R6 Mark II and put it on a $1,000 diet, and the R7 got the shrunken sensor and the R8 got the shrunken body. I think the R7 is definitely for people with more specific use cases like sports and action or wildlife, um, unless you just want the best crop sensor body, but for whatever reason you don't want to upgrade to full frame. The R8 is a more of a general purpose camera. It's very easy to carry around and travel with. If you don't care much about the most durable and feature packed body and you just want the best image quality for $1,500 for photos and videos, I think it's going to be pretty hard to beat. Pretty much the only weakness of the R8 are the smaller battery and the lack of IBIS, but I guess that's what you get for a $1,000 discount from the R6 Mark II. So that's going to be for me today. Thank you for watching. And if you think one of these is the right camera for you, please check out the B&H links in the description. And if you make a purchase through the link, you're not only supporting a great business, I also get a small commission for the sales, which helps me continue to create contents like this for you for free. So thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.